This is Cecil B. DeMille in Hollywood. It didn't take much detective work to discover the stars that the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard most wanted to hear on these programs. Either one alone would make us very popular with you tonight. Together. Well, what more can I say than tonight's stars are Bob Hope and Hedy Lamar. Hedy asked me to tell you that she'd like to come in person to every place where you're listening. I said, you probably wish the same. But the next best thing to a personal visit from Hetty is tonight's play, which is called The Bride Came C.O.D. And after the play, you'll hear from both Hetty and Bob. Lux presents Hollywood. Radio Theater brings you Bob Hope and Hattie Lamar in The Bride Came C.O.D. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Traditionally, the week between Christmas and New Year's Day is the biggest week in the whole theatrical calendar. So we're doing our best to preserve tradition by ushering out 1941 in a blaze of glory, a blaze kindled by one of the most startling casts in our history, Bob Hope and Hedy Lamar. Some time ago, we decided that the bride came COD had great possibilities for Bob. All that remained was the little matter of finding the right bride. Then one day, we had an inspiration. I called Bob in his dressing room at Paramount and asked him if he'd like to play opposite the lady who had just finished a picture... H.M. Pullum, Esquire, over at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, Miss Hedy Lamar. There was some confusion at the other end of the phone before Bob replied. Sorry, C.B., we, we, we've got a bad connection. Sounded like you said Hedy Lamar. <laughs> I don't think he really believed it until Hedy walked in the door for rehearsals. But if he still thinks I'm a miracle man, perhaps this is the time to tell him what Hedy Lamar said when I asked her to be Bob's bride in this play. Her answer was... Bob Hope? Oh, I think he's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, here they are in the Bride Came COD, adapted from the Warner Brothers picture. Just take an aviator, an heiress, a kidnapping, a ghost town, an abandoned mine, mix them enthusiastically, hand the whole concoction to stars like these two, and you've got the Bride Came COD. Right there, we have the makings of a hit. Just one thing is missing. The part of the play that an audience contributes... And I assure you, that is a big part. At the DeMille office in Paramount, for instance, we think we have a good picture in Reap the Wild Wind. But no matter how good we think it is, we won't be sure until you see it. That's the true test of a picture, or a product like Lux Flakes. We know that Lux is as fine a product as scientific ingenuity has devised. But you're the final judge, and your acceptance is the final test. In pictures, we call that audience reaction. The same expression will do here, too. And, of course, audience reaction to Lux Flakes is, well, in a word, a, a Hollywood word, colossal. Now we'll turn the stage over to the Bride Came COD, starring Hedy Lamar as Joan Roger and Bob Hope as Steve Collins. <laughs> When an oil heiress agrees to become the loving bride of an orchestra leader, that's news. And news to an orchestra leader means headlines, publicity, and profits. With this rather sordid idea in mind, the orchestra leader of the Club Suzette in Hollywood has picked the most favorable time to make the wedding announcement. The club is jammed to the doors as he waves his baton and signals for a fanfare. gentlemen, a little announcement. An announcement he says. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, today in this city of Hollywood, as it must to all men, happiness came to yours truly, truly, Alan Bryce. For tonight, after much pressure, I consented to become a bridegroom. The lucky lady is here now. I'll have a spotlight thrown on her so you girls <laughs> can go over and scratch her eyes out. Presenting Miss Joan Roger. <laughs> Take a bow, Joan. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Okay, Charlie, take the baton. I'm going to be busy. Uh, 
Well, Joan, like the announcement? Alan, it was wonderful, but I'm getting worried. <laughs> Why? My uncle, I really should have told him. What for? He'll know soon enough. Uh, hey, there's Tommy Keenan. Hiya, Tommy. I. Uh... You've heard of Tommy Keenan, Joan, newspaper man? Oh, yes, I've read your column, Mr. Keenan. Yeah, a lot of people do. What's the matter, Mr. Keenan? Are you feeling bad? No, but I will soon. I'm on the air in 15 minutes and not one juicy item. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear my announcement? I'm in Clover. The girl said yes. My troubles are over. Crowned with success. I know. Hit parade 1937. I'm sorry, Bryce, but I can't get excited. You've been engaged to three different girls in the last six weeks. All three were clients of my press agent. This one's different. Yeah? Are you, Joan? <laughs> I hope so. Look, Tommy, maybe you don't know who Miss Roger is. I know all about Miss Roger, niece and sole heir of Lucius K. Winfield, the oil tycoon, having reached the age of reason, is doing her best to spend the old man's money. In short, the biography of a glamour girl. Am I right, Miss Roger? <laughs> you might add, and I'm having the time of my life. Yeah, but that isn't news, and being engaged to Bryce isn't any... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? You know, this might be news at that. Suppose you elope tonight, Las Vegas. Elope? Oh, no, I couldn't. Uh, uh, why not, Joan? Yes, yeah, sure, why not? Think of it, flying through the night under the stars. Say, wasn't there a lyric something like that? Never mind, never mind. Listen, news is scarce tonight, and you'll make the front pages coast to coast. Waiter, get me a phone! Joan, dear, we'll never get married again under such favorable circumstances. But my uncle's in Chicago on business. You'll hear it on my broadcast. Everybody listens to me. Well, if you really think I... We should, Alan. With you by my side, dear, neither time nor tide, dear. Shut whatever. up. Uh, Operator, this is Tommy Keenan. Get me airflights incorporated and quick. Hello. Air Flights Incorporated. See Los Angeles by plane, $2. The Stars Homes, $5. Good evening. Who? Oh, well, Mr. Collins ain't here just now, Mr. Keenan. He flew over to Pomona to see a movie. Huh? A uh, party of three to Las Vegas and back? Yeah, well, I'm not sure Steve can make it. Okay, Mr. Keenan, I'll tell him as soon as he gets back. Hello, hello, Steve Collins at NC-164, calling Burbank. Steve Collins calling Burbank. Burbank calling Collins. Steve Collins calling Burbank. Burbank calling Steve Collins. Well, I can't think of any reason why we two shouldn't get together. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Come on, Gertie, we're home. Oh, gee, Steve, it was a wonderful movie, and it was wonderful riding in your plane, too. Well, it's your last one. Why, Steve? Well, I ain't gonna take out any girl that I have to chase all over the wings for a kiss. <laughs> Wanna kiss me now, Stevie? Sure. Oh... Oh, Steve, where did you learn to kiss like that? Well, every morning I drink a double malted through a straw. <laughs> Gee, it's, it's awful. A swell guy like you has to have a wife and two kids. Oh, well, I was so young at the time, but I'm not sorry. They're great kids. Did I ever show you their picture? Yeah, every ten minutes. <laughs> really? Well, look, uh, I, uh, I, I want to show it to you right here. Look, here's the boy. He's eight. Hi, old timer. And there's a little girl, six. Hiya, sweetheart. And there's my wife. Hiya. Well, I guess I shouldn't be seeing you again, should I? Oh, I guess you shouldn't. You'll call for me next Tuesday at the regular time? Half an hour earlier. I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Stevie. Thanks for the buggy ride. So long, Gert. Oh, hi, old timer. Hiya, sweetheart. Steve, I don't like the uh, use you're making of my wife and kids. Uh, listen, that reminds me. Haven't you got any new pictures of your kids? I like to keep them up to date. Look. This one shows Junior wearing a Hoover button. Look, Steve, if you don't want to get married, why don't you be honest and tell the dames you don't? Oh, no, it's much easier this way. I don't have to break any campaign promises. Well, why do you have to use my kids? Why don't you just make up two kids? Oh, Pee-wee, that would be lying. No, I'm making sure that no girl hooks me till I have a whole fleet of planes of my own. Yeah? Well, after 12 o'clock tonight, you won't even have one plane. Hinkle's been here and he's coming back. Hinkle? Yeah, the guy from the friendly finance company. He's going to snatch that plane of yours for back payment. You owe him $1,100. Oh, we can't let him do it, Pee-wee. It took me 10 years to get a plane of my own. Yeah, and it'll take him just 10 minutes to take it away. Oh, but business is booming. In a few months, I'll have enough money to redeem my mother. <laughs> All I know is he's coming back here at 12 o'clock. It's a great world, isn't it? Turn on the radio, Pee-wee. Get some nice, sad music while I go put a slash in my throat, king size. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough, Steve. Tonight, folks, it is my pleasure to announce one of the biggest scoops that has ever come out of the West. As the culmination of a whirlwind four-day courtship, 
The musical world's most eligible bachelor, Alan Bryce, will tonight become a Benedict. His bride will be the beautiful Joan Roger, niece of Lucius K. Winfield, Texas oil tycoon. Holy cats, Just I forgot. What? Ago, That's Lucia Keenan. The You're supposed to fly the three of them in Las Vegas tonight. The three of who? Yeah, Keenan, the bride, the and the groom. Well, what time? Right after the broadcast. Well, why yeah, didn't you say so? I don't know. What about Hinkle? Oh, forget Hinkle. Maybe I can work this trip in anyhow. At least it's a couple of bucks extra. Okay. I'll call Keenan. Tell him we're ready anytime. The sooner the better. Right. Hello, hello, Air Flights Incorporated, see Los Angeles by plane, two dollars. Who? Chicago? Oh, put them on. Hello? Who's this? Oh, Mr. Winfield. No, your niece isn't here yet. She... Oh, wait a minute, there's somebody coming in the office now. Come on, Joan, hurry up, Alan. Oh, how exciting. Excuse me, are you Miss Roger? Yes, I am. Well, you want it on the phone, Chicago. Oh, Alan, that must be Uncle Lucius. Well, speak to him, darling. Yeah, here, here, I'll tell him. No, Mr. Keenan, I'll do it. Hello, hello, Uncle Lucius. Hello. Joan, is that you? Yes, I... Listen, I've called every airport in Los Angeles. What's the idea? Uncle Lucius, What's let me explain. What's about you getting married? Oh, please try to understand. I love Alan Bryce desperately. You must be desperate. I'm not going to have a fortune hunter in my family. Alan Bryce is not a fortune hunter, and I'm going to marry him. You are not. I'm flying to Las Vegas right now. Goodbye. Ah, <laughs> that's the girl. Is the plane ready? Oh, right outside. I'll be right with you. Come on, Alan. Darling, you were marvelous. I'll see she was. Hello. Hello, operator. We were just talking to Lucius K. Winfield in Chicago. We were cut off. Get him back for me, will you? I'll wait. Steve, what are you doing? Quiet. I've got an idea, Pee Wee. Is the ship okay? Sure. If Hinkle don't get him and grab it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Winfield. This is Steve Collins. Who's Steve Collins? Well, I'm flying your niece to Las Vegas. Uh, Mr. Winfield, how would you like me to stop that wedding? Stop it? How can you stop it? Well, leave that to me. I'll deliver your niece to you unmarried in Omaha by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Take a plane and meet me there. What's your price? Well, this is a very unusual case. How much does your niece weigh? Uh, about 115 pounds. Well, ten dollars a pound. That's my standard charge for beef. <laughs> it's a deal. I'll have the money for you. Okay, I'll bring the beef. You be there with the potatoes. See you in Omaha. <laughs> Come on, Pee Wee. We've got to work fast. Evening, Colin. Steve, it's Hinkle from the finance company. Oh, hello. Mr. Hinkle, I'm glad to see you. You're glad to see me? Why? Well, I'm going on a long trip tonight, and I'd like to have you give me back a quarter of my blood. Mm. I'll... I'll take the keys to your plane, Colin. Uh, Mr. Hinkle, you're in luck. I just made a deal with a big shot. I'll be back by 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with 1100 bucks. I suppose you need the plane to go after it? That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. My conscience will be bothering me all night, but the friendly finance company wants them keys. Oh, Hinkle, you can't take away that plane. You might as well take my right arm. Yeah, if we'd loaned you money on it, we'd take that too. Give me the key to the plane. Try and get it. You don't want me to use force, do you? Yeah. Okay. Let him have it, Steve. <laughs> Why, I'll show you, you financial rat. I'll knock your... Oh! Steve, what's the matter? Just let me know when the blackout is over. Now, where's the key to the plane? Come on, where is it? Right up there, Mr. Hinkle. Up where? There! <laughs> That'll hold you, Hinkle. Come on, Steve, wake up, fella. Steve, come on, Steve, wake up, wake up! Just ten more minutes, Mom. I won't be late for school. <laughs> Steve, open your eyes. Oh. 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 Hey, what happened? Where's Hinkle? He's over there on the floor. He's out cold. Oh, I'll kill that guy. Drag me over there and I'll hit him again. <laughs> Hey, Steve, what's the matter with your eye? It looks funny. Yeah, something blue has been added. <laughs> Listen, Pee Wee, I'm going out to the plane. I'll tell Keenan he's wanted in here on the phone. When he gets here, you go out and call Bryce. Get it? Okay. If Hinkle comes to, put him to sleep again. Hurry up, Collins. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Keenan, you want it on the phone. Oh, who in the name of... I'll be right back, Bryce. Well, make it snappy. In the plane, Miss Roger. Thank you. Hey, let go of my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter, Joan? He pinched me. What's the idea, Collins? Oh, I was just trying to guess her weight. You know, poundage is important in a plane. Hey, wait, Mr. Bryce. Well? Uh, Mr. Bryce, Mr. Keenan wants you in the office. It's important. Excuse me, Joan. I hope there's no hit. Hurry back, Alan. Let's go, Pee-wee. Go ahead. Hey, hey. We're moving. Stop. Oh, don't get excited. We're not taking off. And why, why is this building moving away from us? Oh, that, the FHA is taking it back. Stop this plane, stop! Oh, just let go of my hair. You want me to crack us up? Stop the plane. What do you think you're doing? It's very simple. I'm kidnapping you. Listen, I don't care what you... What? You've been kidnapped. mind if I sit down here beside you? No. Help yourself. You know, you don't look like a kidnapper. Well, this is my first job. You 
You have any more? Not me. They call me the Solo Kid, better known as the Bruiser from Azusa. I suppose you're taking me to your hideout. You said it, babe. I'm taking you to a little place hidden away from the whole world. Where's that? The Rose Bowl. <laughs> Even for a kidnapper, that's pretty bad. How much are you asking for me? Oh, about $1,100, more or less. $1,100 for me? Why, it's ridiculous. It's humiliating. A girl of my social standing, an heiress. Why, I... I'm almost a national figure. Well, well, Miss Gin Rummy in 1941. <laughs> How much do you think you're worth? Well, at least a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand for you? Who do you think you are, Hedy Lamar? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I made a bargain, and I'm going to stick to it. Bargain with whom? I made a deal with your uncle. I deliver you to him COD in the Omaha in the morning. But why? So that you can't marry that Bryce guy. I don't believe it. My uncle wouldn't think of doing such a despicable thing. He didn't think of it. I did. Why, you, you... Shh, shh, careful, careful. I can't believe it. Believe what? That for a mere $1,100, you'd come between two people who love each other. Well, do you think I want the money for myself? Yes. Where should we mail the encyclopedia? <laughs> Honest, though, I'm not thinking of myself at all. Look, see this picture? Ah, oh, children, are they yours? Mine? Well, I'd like to think of them as their mothers. Hi, old-timer. Hi, you sweetheart. Ah, oh, that's touching. Tell me, Mr. Collins, would you like to do something big, something really beautiful for your children and wife? Oh, I sure would. It's time I did something for Clara. Well, all you'd have to do is fly me back to Los Angeles now, and I'll pay you twice what my uncle's paying you. Oh, sounds like a good deal, but I couldn't think of it. All right, then I'll give you 3000 4000 nope. nope, I promised your uncle. 5000 Mr. Collins. You'd better get some mm -hmm. sleep. We won't be in Omaha till morning. $6,000. you will find a blanket in that rear locker. Very well, thank you. Don't mention it. Just stretch out on the floor, Miss Roger. I'll wake you up when we get to Omaha. Good night. I said good night, Miss Roger. Hey, hey, what's the matter back there? Sorry, but I'm not going to Omaha, Mr. Collins. So long. Wait, get away from that door. Don't jump. Omaha's a nice place. Listen, that parachute, you've got it on oh, back. parachute jump. All my life I wanted to try a parachute jump. Well, here's my chance. Bye. Listen, you'll kill yourself. Come oh, here. Let me go. Let Sit down there. Look out. Listen, the motor's dying. Well, take that parachute off. You want to kill us? We're falling. Get away from that door. Well, do something. We're going to crash. I'll do something when you give me that parachute. Ah! We're going to crash. Now look what you've done. What happened? I went into a stall. Well, you should have attended to your piloting and let me alone. Sure, I should have let you jump. Well, why didn't you? Because you got the parachute on backwards. Backwards? Yes, backwards. You can't reach the ripcord. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, come on. Get out. Uh, uh, I'm a little faint. Well, you ought to be. Look what you did to my plane. And I don't even own it yet. Every time I take my hand off the steering wheel, it flies to the finance company by itself. <laughs> Listen. If I could feel sorry for anybody right now, I'd feel sorry for myself. Well, here we are, and it looks like here we're going to stay. It's sort of dark around here. Yeah, this indirect lighting never does work right. <laughs> Come on, here's your blanket. What's that for? That's your bed for tonight. <laughs> you don't expect me to sleep out here, do you? Well, it's all right with me if you want to bunk in the plane, but you'll have to sleep standing in your head. Now, look, we're in the same boat. You don't have to growl at me all the time. Well, what do you expect in a situation like this? Pear-shaped tones? Would you mind telling me where I can get some water? Water? Where are you going to find faucets in a desert? A desert? Are we in a desert? One of the best, the Calavada. Bigger than Death Valley and further from civilization. Just a minute. What's that blanket doing alongside of mine? Oh, that's where I'm sleeping tonight. I'll thank you to get a room of your own. Oh, that suits me fine. How's this? No, it's still too close. Just keep going till you're out of sight. Lady, you took the words right out of my mouth. So long. See you in the morning. <laughs> Come over here to me. Where are you? Right here behind these goose pebbles. <laughs> oh, there's something over that way. Huh? Oh, Mr. Collins, what, what, what was it? Well, it sounded like a wolf. A wolf? Oh, hold me close. Wait a minute. There is no wolf in the desert. There is now. <laughs> Where I can see you. Whoever thought a coyote would bring us together. All right, 
I'll sleep here, but I warn you, I snore. Bed? Well, they don't call me Chattanooga Choo Choo Collins for nothing. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> you cold? A little. First time I've ever gone to bed with the windows so wide open. Yeah, I guess one thin blanket isn't much use out here. No, two would be fine. You're right. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll toss you. Heads, I get your blanket, tails, you get mine. <laughs> No, thanks. I've seen those double-headed coins. Just as you like. Night. <sighs> well, what is it now? I can't sleep. Why not? No pink pills. I never can get to sleep without them. Oh, too bad. But I didn't think I'd need them on this trip. Look, I'm sorry you can't sleep, but I can, and I will, too, if you'll only stop talking. Well, you kidnapped me, and the least you can do is talk to me when I can't sleep. I think there's something about your style of conversation that may get me drowsy. That insult, that insult didn't slip by me, but a good answer did. I'll take it up in the morning. I'll take it up now. Listen, lady, I know this is a romantic setting, and I know how you feel, but please leave me alone. Don't get me wrong. All you are to me is a pink pill. All right. What do we talk about? Well, what about your childhood? Oh, I was the average kid, believed in Santa Claus up to a certain age, hated school. When I was 15, I started to think about girls. At 17, I found out what they thought about me. From then on, I've been reading Esquire just to keep me posted. <laughs> How about it? Am I boring you? Yeah, thanks. I'm getting drowsy. Good. Go on. Tell me how you met Clara. Who? Clara, yeah, your wife. Oh, my wife. <laughs> well, I met Clara at a strawberry festival. Very romantic. We both broke out together. <laughs> I took her home and we sat in the parlor. Gee, she was a beautiful girl. The most beautiful girl I ever met. What a figure. What a face. She had eyes like Marlena Dietrich, hair like Veronica Lake, a nose like Madeline Carroll, a chin like Myrna Loy, and lips like Claudette Colbert. Well, we sat there a while, and, and I kissed her, and, and she kissed me, and, and I kissed her, and, and she kissed me. Hey! Uh, what? No, I can't sleep. <laughs> Mr. DeMille returns with Hedy Lamar and Bob Hope in just a moment for Act Two of The Bride Came C.O.D. And now, Libby Collins with some fashion news. Thank you, Mr. Roy. One new idea cropping up in the stores nowadays is black lingerie. It's interesting for a change, and of course it luxes just as easily as the white and pastel tones do. You can have a whole lingerie wardrobe of black. Undies, nighties, everything. And here's a hint that's timely. Nowadays, it's a real duty to take the best care of everything we have. So remember that Lux is an undie saver. A quick little Lux sudsing every day not only makes us sure we don't offend, it also keeps lingerie like new much longer. That is a timely hint, Libby, and a true one. Perspiration does two things. It makes us offend. It weakens delicate fabrics. They wear out faster. It's foolish to risk these when new Quick Lux Flakes remove perspiration and soil so quickly and so safely. There's no harmful alkali in new Quick Lux to injure fabrics or fade colors. And with these rich, fast-working suds, there's no rubbing. And just notice how much that generous big box will do. Yes, new Quick Lux is thrifty. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Bride Came C.O.D., starring Bob Hope as Steve Collins and Hedy Lamar as Joan Roger. Joan Roger kidnapped, socialized, abducted. A thrilling drama was enacted last night when Joan Roger, bound for Las Vegas to wed Alan Bryce, was kidnapped by Steve Collins, Los Angeles pilot and flying instructor. All state police were warned to be on the lookout. Besides the kidnapping charge, Collins is also wanted for stealing an airplane from the friendly finance company. It's dawn of the following day. The first rays of the sun transform the great Calavada desert into a fairyland of purple and gold. Beside the disabled plane, Steve Collins and Joan Roger stand spellbound, held breathless by the majesty and beauty of the scene. Joan breaks the long silence. I've got a pain in my stomach. Must be something you didn't eat. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Look, what's that over there? If it's a horse, I take it back. It's a lot of buildings. 
It's a town. Oh, it can't be. It must be a mirage. It is not. You knew that town was there all the time, and you deliberately kept me out here all night. Oh, don't be silly. Why would I want to keep you out all night? I guess now I'm being silly. <laughs> I'm going over and find the sheriff. Well, I'll go with you. Yes, come along, please. I think you can do a lot to brighten up a feather of sidewalks they have in this town. All they need is a few people to walk on it. I don't see a soul. Isn't much of a town, is it? No, it isn't even much of a ghost town. Is that what it is? Certainly. Look at those houses. They'd all fall down if the spider webs didn't hold them up for the termites. <laughs> I imagine the last time any living thing set foot here was about 1900. Gosh, a ghost and laying an egg, too. <laughs> there must be somebody here. Where there's a rooster, there's people. You mean where there's a rooster, there's chickens. Hello, folks. There, you see? Hello, mister. Uh, step right in here, folks. Uh, welcome to the Palace Hotel. Oh, thanks. I'm Steve Collins, and this is Miss Joan Roger. Well, pleased to meet you. My name's Pop Tolliver. What do you have with your eggs? Ham or bacon? Bacon, please. Ham for me. Uh, you'll take bacon, too. I don't feel like cutting into a new ham. Say, that's quite a pantry you've got down there. Finest coal cellar in the world. It's an old mine tunnel. Miles of tunnels run right under this floor. What town is this, please? Bonanza. It used to be called after the old Bonanza mine. How do you want your eggs? Up or over? Up. My stomach will turn them over. <laughs> over. You'll take yours up, too. I don't want no confusion. Say, well, have a seat. Tell me something. Have you been here ever since the town folded up? Sure have. Mine's closed down. Everybody skidooed about 1910. I owned the hotel, so I stayed, waiting for another boom. I'm still waiting. Well, I didn't think I'd find a Republican way out here. How far is it to the nearest town? Ninety miles to Las Vegas and sixty to Tonopah. And how often do you drive to town? I don't. A fella brings my grub out once a month, but he ain't due for a couple of weeks. You two heading for Las Vegas to get married? Certainly not. Oh, darling, let's tell the truth. We had a quarrel, Pop, a lover's quarrel. We did not. <laughs> Now's the time to have them spats before you're married. It took me three wives to learn that. Listen, Pop. Listen, Pop, I want to tell you something about this man. Oh, not now, darling. Don't bother strangers with our little troubles. Let's just kiss and make up. Let me alone. Oh, come on, Lammy Pie. Give Stevikins a nice little issy kissy. That's the way the Eskimos kiss. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, Pop, I'll run out and see if I can fix up my plane. Pop, don't let him go. He ain't going. Sit down, son. I'm sorry, Pop, but... Sit down, son, or I'll fill you full of lead. What are you talking... Hey, don't point that gun at me. What is this? Well, I happen to have a radio set, son, and it happened to say last night that Miss Roger was kidnapped. And he's the kidnapper, Pop. Uh, I guessed that when he come in. Got a criminal face, that man. Oh, just a minute. Don't look at my nose when you say that. <laughs> Let's go, son. Go where? I'm putting you in the lockup. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going out and work on that plane. My trigger finger's itching, son. Oh, you can't scare me. You haven't got the nerve to shoot me. Stay away from that door, son. Listen, nobody tells Steve Collins what to do. But in your case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> Next time, son, I won't miss. Now get along to that locker. <laughs> This here radio is kind of old-fashioned now, I guess. Well, sit down, Miss Roger. Dinner's ready. Oh, Pop, do you suppose that plane that passed over here today saw us? You've been asking me that all afternoon. I don't know. Here. Here's something special for you. What is it? Forty-five-year-old sherry. Last time I opened it was in 1919, when I drank a toast to Prohibition. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Roger, oil heiress, is alive and safe in a nameless ghost town on the Calabata Desert. Less than two hours ago, the girl was sighted by an airliner when the girl flashed a distress signal skyward with a mirror. Oh, a red plane was also Let's sighted. Let's hear the rest of it. Oh, we're thinking to that mirror. Miss Roger was first believed to have been kidnapped, but later it was learned that her wealthy uncle had authorized her abduction in order to prevent her elopement to Alan Bryce, who... What's the matter? Why did you turn it off, Pop? Kidnapped, huh? Give me that sherry. I'm going to pour it back in the bottle. What for? Then I'm going to let that fella out of the hoose gal. No, Pop. You, he's a criminal type. You said so yourself. And he's getting out now. Come on, open up. Open the door. What do you want? Well, the plane's all fixed. Are you ready? Ready for what? To go with me. I'm not going any place with you. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I see your point. You want me to drag you by the hair. Is that it? You tried, brother, and you'll have a fight on your hands. Okay, I never lost a decision to a woman yet. Come on. 
Ow! I'll show you. Now listen. Ow, you kicked me. Let me go. Let go. Cut it out, you. Let me alone. Come back here. Come back. Miss Roche, where are you? Come back here. I just seen her, son. Oh, Pop, where is she? Where'd she go? Just run down the mine shaft. Down the mine, eh? Well, gold is where you can find it. Thanks, Pop. Wait, don't go down there without a light. Let me go. Cut it out now. Come along peacefully. That's what happened. Are you hurt? I don't think so. Are you? Not much, thank heaven, for these steel-ripped girdles. <coughs> Have you got a match? No, here's a lighter. Let's get out of here. The dust is choking me. Get out of here. That's fine. Except that you've blocked up the entrance. What? The entrance. The entrance to the mine. It is blocked up. See? we we'll have to find out if these other tunnels have any exits. And if they haven't? Then we might as well each marry a gopher and settle down. <laughs> Tired? Sort of. I'm soaking wet, too. Yeah, thanks for carrying me over that puddle. <laughs> Better sit down and rest while I take a look at this next tunnel. You mean the last tunnel? Crying, huh? <laughs> I had you pegged. I made a bet with myself that you'd be boo-hooing into your hanky within three hours. Oh, stop it. You must have been up against this sort of thing before. There must have been some crisis at the store club when the waiter brought you the wrong wine or something. <laughs> Why, at a time like this, must you bring up the pot? I don't think our future's worth talking about. Well, isn't there anything we can do? You have longer nails than I have. Start digging. Where are you going? I told you, I'm going to explore this tunnel. Don't be long. Sit tight. I'll be back as soon as I can. Fine thing. Wandering around in a hole in the ground. Every five steps, I smack my head up against the post. One, two, three, four. Oh! <laughs> What's that, a light? Hey, who's there? Who's there? This is Steve Collins. Hi there, Steve. This is Pop. Oh, well, keep that light on. It'll be right there. Wait. Are there any more posts down here? I don't think so. Good. Here I come, Pop. Oh. Hey, come to think of it, there is a post right over there. I found it. Hi, son. How'd you get down here, Pop? Oh, easy. That door over there leads right into my pantry. Well, lead me to that door. I'm starving. What happened to you? Oh, cave-in. Back in the entrance. Where's the girl? She's still there. She thinks we're trapped. Well, maybe you better go get her while I wrestle up something to eat. Oh, let her wait a few minutes. It'll be good for her. Ah, food. <laughs> Help yourself, son. There's a whole ham there. Make yourself a sandwich. Oh, thanks, Pop. You'll find the mustard and pickles on the shelf. Mustard and pickles? Hey, what's that? Sounds like an airplane. I'll take a look out of the window. Let me see, Pop. Yeah, that's a Los Angeles sheriff's plane. I've seen it around the airport. What's the sheriff want here? Well, probably after me for stealing my own ship. Well, I guess this is the finish. Say, what kind of a deal did you make with old man Winfield? Well, I was to deliver Joan to him, unmarried. Well, then, my boy, you're not licked yet. All you got to do is go back and keep her in the mine. It's a cinch your uncle come hot-footing it here. When he gets here, I'll let you know when you can hand her over and collect the money. Pop, you're a genius. <laughs> here, you skedaddle back with some of this ham. Oh, wait, I can't do that. If I bring food, she'll know I found a way out. Uh, that's right. Quick, Pop, uh, fix me up a couple of sandwiches. I can eat them on the way back to her. There's no use both of us starving. <laughs> Gee, I'm a rat. Pop, make that four sandwiches. I may as well be a fat rat. Are you sure there was no way out of that tunnel? That's right, Miss Roger. I explored every inch of it. The only thing I found was a pile of bones and a note that said, Goodbye, tell the good humor company I did my best. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, I guess we'll just have to sit here and... Pass the time of day until they dig us out. Ah, uh, you needn't pretend. Huh? I know, child. I know as well as you do that nobody will dig us out because nobody knows we're here. Did Stanley know where Livingston was? You're still making bad jokes. It's kind of you to shield me from the truth, but it isn't necessary. Believe me, I'm not shielding you. I've always wondered what it would be like to face death. Now I know. We're both going to die of starvation. Yeah. Say, what odds will you give me I last longer than you? <laughs> Don't joke, please. Okay, well, I guess I'll take a nap. Good night. Good night. <laughs> what was that? Oh, sorry. You hiccuped. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, I was dreaming I was eating a big steak dinner and I started to chew too fast. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could dream up a steak dinner. 
Say, was there a deal pickle in your dream? Huh? Come to think of it, yes. Mm, I can even smell that pickle. <laughs> well, I, I can explain that. I'm wearing a herringbone suit. <laughs> Tell me, is your whole life passing in front of your eyes? No. Why? Don't you know? At a time like this, it's supposed to. My life is passing in front of my eyes right now, and it's not a very pretty picture. Such a wasted life. Who'll mourn for me outside of my uncle? Well, how about this Bryce fellow? Oh, I'm not so sure about him. After all, I've only known him four days. Four days? Well, what were you going to marry him for, just to fill out the week? <laughs> you see, that was the sort of life I led. Silly, useless, impulsive. It's different with you. Well, why is it different with me? I've got nothing in life, just a plane that doesn't even belong to me. Well, what about your wife and two children? Don't they count? Oh, certainly. Hi, old-timer. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Mabel. Who's Mabel? Mabel, my wife. Mabel? I thought you said her name was Kara. Oh, which wife did you mean? My first or second? <laughs> you see, Mabel was my first and mother of my children. Oh, you've had two wives? Have you had any children by your second wife? Sure, two. I didn't want to show any favoritism. <laughs> you know, you don't look like a man who had two wives and four children I hardly believe it myself Gosh, I'm hungry So am I <laughs> Oh, excuse me Did you hiccup again? Yes, it's just a hangover from that dream Oh <laughs> Mr. Collins, would you shake hands with me? Well, what for? Well, at a time like this, it's wrong to harbor grudges or ill feelings. I want you to know that I forgive you for everything. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I brought you to this. And at a time like this, it's wrong to withhold the truth. I'm sorry we got our schedules mixed. I'm sorry I didn't meet you before Clara and Mabel. Well, I'm sorry I didn't meet you before Alan Bryce. Say, you mind if I get a little closer to you? It's getting cold. I was just going to ask if I could. Uh, Joan. Joan, listen Suppose I were to tell you that I'm not... That, that I haven't... What, Steve? Joan, I'm not married. I have no wives. I haven't any children. I, I don't... Oh, it's just a tactic I've been using on women to keep from getting involved. Oh, Steve. Well, I'm glad I used it because now I'm free and ripe and ready to be involved. Involve me, honey. cheap and vile and deceitful liar. Will you kiss me, Steve? Will I? Oh, Joan. Steve? Huh? Kiss me again. Wait a minute till my ears stop flapping. <laughs> okay, here we go. You liar! What's the matter? Mustard! What? Mustard! You've been eating! No, that's not mustard. It's just the kind of lipstick I use. You... You know a way out, and it's down that last tunnel. Oh, Joan, listen. Take me out of here. No, please. Then I'll find a way out myself. Oh, Joan, come back here. The tunnel's full of posts. Joan. All right, then I'll come after you. One, two, three, four, five. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and Hedy Lamar and Bob Hope will return for Act Three of The Bride Came C.O.D. And now, will you listen a moment and count while you hear? Seven times. Did you count the chimes? Well, that is meant to impress on the women of our audience this fact. Your job of washing dishes is apt to take seven long hours every single week. Seven hours when your hands are in soap and water. Now, isn't it pretty important just what kind of soap you use? You've heard of our famous dishpan hands tests. They've proved how red and rough some soaps make your hands. They've proved, too, that with new quick lux, hands stay soft, smooth, and lovely. Well, you can easily prove this for yourself, and very economically, too. Just get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow and try it for washing dishes. It makes more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, 
than any of ten other well-known soaps. More suds, and it's suds that count. Rich, pure suds that clean in a flash without harmful alkali to roughen and redden your hands. I don't know of a more thrifty way to keep your hands soft and charming. Begin tomorrow using new Quick Lux Flakes for dishes. It comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of The Bride Came C.O.D. It's a few hours later. Steve has been dug out of the tunnel and is safe and sound in the Palace Hotel. Now the old ghost town is beginning to be reborn. Al Bryce and the Keyhole reporter Keenan have arrived on the scene, bringing with them a flock of newspaper men and a justice of the peace. For the first time in 30 years, the Palace Hotel is doing a brisk business. Now wait, boys, wait, quiet! You all get your story, and you can say you got it straight from Tommy Keenan. Okay, Tommy, okay. Alan Bryce and Joan Roger are going to be married right here in Bonanza, and right now. How about it, Alan? You can quote me as saying, I have found my love again, the skies are blue above again. How about it, Joan? The sooner the better. Oh, wait a minute. You can't marry this man. You've only known him four days. How do you know he's the right one? The least you can do is weigh yourself and find out what the back of the card says. (laughs) You keep out of this, Mr. Collins. Let's get on with the wedding. We've got plenty of witnesses. Yes, before Uncle gets here. Let's get married. No, listen. This girl has just been through one horrible experience. She's in no mood for another. He's right. I won't get married here. What? Why? I can't stand this place a minute longer. It has too many unpleasant memories for me. But, darling, we brought the justice all the way from Las Vegas. Oh, let her make up her own mind. It is made up. We're flying to Las Vegas right now and getting married there. I'll get my things ready. Oh, wait, you can't do that either. Listen, you shouldn't marry an orchestra leader. Don't forget the hand that rocks the cradle shouldn't do it in boogie-woogie rhythm. Jones, dear, I brought the justice all the way from Las Vegas. Hey, is your name Steve Collins? Well, always has been. What do you want? I'm Sheriff McGee from Los Angeles. You're under arrest, Collins. Just slip on these handcuffs for size. Hold on, Sheriff. Have you got a warrant for this man's arrest? I sure have. Read it and weep, brother. Well, even without my glasses, I can tell you can't arrest him with this. And why not? Because it's a California warrant, and we're in the state of Nevada. Nevada? Is that outside the Los Angeles city limits? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Make me out of dope? Uh, why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> I don't recall your asking me. All right. But I'm sending to Las Vegas for a deputy. We'll get you yet, brother. Hey, fellas, uh, I just heard a flash on the radio. Old man Winfield left Las Vegas half an hour ago. That means you'll be here any minute. Oh, come on, come on let's do it. Well, love is a wonderful thing, isn't it, Pop? I'm just quoting, of course. <clears throat> Too bad. See, if something was to keep Joan and Bryce from leaving here till old man Winfield shows up, you'd still collect 1100 bucks, right? Right. And if you had that dough, you could square this larceny rap, right? Sure, that's right. You got an idea, Pop? No. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's this pillow here? Souvenir pillow. I used to sell them in the old days. But it says Bonanza, California. Oh, that's right. It is California. Oh, but it can't be California. I haven't seen any slacks yet. Anyway, (laughs) you told the sheriff it was Nevada. Now, Steve, you wouldn't want to get pinched, would you? I get it. Thanks, Pop. Say, wait, that justice they brought, where's he from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Nevada? Sure. And he doesn't know it's California either. Pop, I think I've got a brilliant idea, and I'd like to know what it's doing in my head. Ready, dear? Yes, Alan. Well, the plane's waiting. Let's go, darling. All right, boys. We're leaving. Wait. Wait a second. Uh, Can I speak to you a minute, Bryce? What do you want now? Well, I just want to congratulate you, that's all. You're getting awfully friendly all of a sudden. I smell a rat, and I think it's you. Well, look, I admit I tried to bust up your wedding, and I'm sorry. I was a cad. Right now, I want to see you two married. I want to see you two married more than anything else. Even more than I want to see Dick Tracy catch the mole. (laughs) I really do. No hard feelings, are there? Congratulations. Well, uh, no, of course not. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, thank you for saving me from making a fool of myself, from doing something I would have regretted all my life. Hey, Miss Roger, I wanted a soft back there in the tunnel, but out here in the cold, clear light, I realize that you two deserve each other. My one regret is that I can't be in Las Vegas with you for the ceremony. Well, sure would like to have you there. To be your best man, it would be a privilege. Oh, what a story. The man who abducts the girl turns out to be the best man at her wedding. Joan, why don't you get married here? I won't hear of it. But, Joan, give me... Now, Keenan, leave Miss Roger alone. Maybe she can't bear to have me at the wedding. Maybe she doesn't trust herself. What do you mean I don't trust myself? Well, you know better than I do what I mean. You mean I'm afraid to have you at my wedding? Why, of all the conceited, insufferable, me afraid... Well, I'll get married here, anywhere, anytime, with 50 of you around. Oh, I'm sorry that's your attitude. Then you'll get married here, Joan? Sure I will. Right now. Let's not waste a minute. 
Ah, oh, a wedding. Say, I love a good wedding, don't you, Pop? I loved him so much, I got married three times. Is that so? You must show me the scars sometime. Congratulations again, Bryce. I'll kiss the bride immediately after the ceremony. Is there going to be a wedding after all, may I ask? Well, well, and who lifted a rock? Who is this we have here? I'm Judge Sobler from Las Vegas. I'm going to marry the couple. Well, there couldn't have been a better choice. No, thank you. Sobler, I seem to know you. Didn't I meet you under a pinball machine in Las Vegas? Oh, oh I'm afraid not. Sobler, Sobler, very familiar. Tell me, have you any relatives in Scranton? Scranton? Let me see. What is this? Are you trying to stall or something? Come on, come on. Let's go on with the wedding by all means. Oh, wait, wait. We've got to have flowers. Pop, I'd like to see a few flowers here. Well, we have cactus all year round. Oh, really? The bride wore cactus and gave her husband the needle. That'll be nice. <laughs> Listen, are you trying to make a farce out of my wedding? Well, I'm only trying to see that you get married in the style you should be married in. Come on, come on. Stop the wedding. Okay. What do you say, Judge Sobler? No, I don't believe I have. Have what? Relatives in Scranton. But my sister-in-law... Oh, for the love of... Let's get on with it. Oh, certainly, certainly. Now, Judge Sobler, will you stand right here, please? Here? No, over there. I think you look better catty corner. Now, Bryce, (laughs) right here, please, before the judge. And you, Miss Roger, I'll just steer you over here to Alan's side. Say, what is this, anyway? Well, I'm sorry. It must be force of habit. I used to work in a parking lot. (laughs) Say, who's going to give the bride away? I will. I don't want you to do anything for me. Well, I'm not doing it for you. I do it for any girl who's getting married. That's how I feel about marriage. I know how you feel about marriage. You with your two wives and four kids. Now, please, don't start digging up my past. You haven't got a big enough shovel. Who asked you to be master of ceremonies at my wedding? Never mind all this. Well, I tried to prevent the wedding, so I'm only trying to make up now. Listen, nobody asked you to prevent it, and nobody's asking you to unprevent it. You're so anxious to get me married. I'll get married, all right. I'll get good and married, and what's more, I'll stay married. Shh can't show any respect for me. Try to show a little for Judge Sober. You can't tell me how to behave. I wouldn't listen to you if you were the last Judge, man... Judge, will you please get going? I can't find my book. Now, there it is, right next to your racing form. <laughs> hey, look! That's Winfield's plane coming in. Uh, oh, old man Winfield. Oh, Judge, hurry up with the ceremony. They've got to be married before he gets here. I'm afraid I'll have to recite the ceremony from memory. My wife packed the wrong book. As long as it's legal, go ahead. Uh, let me see. Now, <clears throat> oh, oh, yes. Uh, do you, Alan Bryce, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Oops, pardon me, wishful thinking. I do. <laughs> do you, John Roger, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Then, according to the laws of Nevada, an authority vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. There's your story, boy. Darling. Alan, where's our pilot? Here I am, Mrs. Bryce. Will you get the plane ready, please? My husband and I want to fly back to Los Angeles immediately. All set, Mrs. Bryce. Uh, Wait, we'd better get something for those seats. They're pretty hard. Oh, pilot, grab those pillows over there. Pillows? Yes, sir. Oh, listen, why leave? This is such a romantic spot. Why not spend your honeymoon here, just the three of us? Oh, get out of my way. Oh, but you can't go now. Your uncle will be here any minute. Oh, he can be just as mad in Los Angeles as he can here. And you're really set on going? I certainly am. Oh, but you just got married. Do you think it's polite to run away this way? The least you can do is wait till your ring turns green. <laughs> Alan, I think I may have to ask you to knock this man down. We've had enough of this business, Collins. Now cut it out. You might as well tell him, Steve. Well, listen, you two can't go to Los Angeles or any other place together. You're not married. We're not married. What? Oh, pay no attention to him, Alan. It's just another trick. Well, tell him, Pop. What state is Bonanza in? California. The ceremony wasn't legal. Sorry, Judge Sober. No, and not at all. This is ridiculous. You have to think of something better than that, Mr. Collins. Joan, on my word of honor. The less said about your word of honor, the better. Well, why do you think I was willing for you to get married? Why do you think I practically pushed you into getting married? Because I knew it wouldn't be legal, that it wouldn't mean anything. Well, we're going to make it mean something. I was just stalling till your uncle got here. Alan, dear, I think after we get settled down, you better give up the music business. Hmm? Uncle could use you in oil. Yes, uncle will probably boil you in oil. <laughs> well, I wouldn't like to give up my career, Joan. After all I've done for music. Well, don't worry. They can always get someone else to tune up Gene Autry's guitar. <laughs> Between you and me, Bryce, isn't marriage silly? Between you and him, it would be. But... Between him and me, I think it's wonderful. Goodbye, Mr. Uh, Collins. So long. Oh, no, don't go, Joan. Just a minute, Collins. You say this is California? Certainly, their marriage isn't legal. Maybe, but this warrant is. You're under arrest. <laughs> darling, what are you crying about? Oh, let me alone. Oh, no, darling, I'm just as happy as you are, but 
I, uh, I happen to have a tighter grip on my oh, own. Take your hands off me. Now, Joan, I understand how it is in one's wedding night. There was a lyric once. If you throw any more lyrics at me, I'll cram them right down your throat. But, darling, I thought you loved my songs. I hate your songs. I hate your songs almost as much as I hate you. Hate me? How is that possible? You want to know something? I've hated you from the first moment I've set eyes on you. Well, you certainly took your time telling me. Darling, let's be sensible. After all, we're married. I know it. That's why I hate you. That's why I hate everybody. Oh, here, darling, rest your head on this pillow. It'll be more complicated. Take that pillow away. I don't want... Wait. Let me see that pillow. Joan, please make up your mind. Look at this. Huh? On the pillow. Souvenir of Bonanza, California. Alan, we're not married. Who isn't married? We, you and me. Oh, Steve wasn't lying. He only did it because... Carla, turn yes. back. Turn back to Bonanza, California. I don't care who's under arrest or what for. All I want to know is where is my niece? Well, you passed her on the way down. She's in the plane with Alan Bryce flying to Los Angeles on their honeymoon. Honeymoon? You mean to say they're married? Don't get excited. They were marrying California territory by a Nevada justice. It isn't legal. Well, as long as they're not married, everything's okay. Yeah, but they think they're married. No fooling. <laughs> That's a hot one. That's the funniest one. I... What am I laughing about? Steve, I'm back. Joan. Thank heaven you're here, Joan. Listen to me. You're not married. Oh, I know I'm not, but I'm going to be. That is, if Steve asks me. Oh, wait a minute. You really want to marry me? Fat Rat Collins? <laughs> yes, Fat. This is ridiculous. You don't know this man. He's right, Joan. I wouldn't want you to rush into a thing like this. You've got to be sure. Take your time and think. Take 10 or 20 seconds. <laughs> Steve, let's get married. As soon as we can. Oh, if that's the way you feel, there's nothing in the world can stop us. We'll be married right now. Don't forget you're under arrest, Colin. We'll be married right now in the Los Angeles night court. I'll give you a hug in the jug. <laughs> The sheriff wants his money, and Uncle Lucius owes you $10 a pound. That's right. If you weigh 110 pounds, I break even. How much do you weigh? 111. Well, that takes care of the sales tax. Pay the man off, Uncle Lucius. <laughs> Very well. The bargain's a bargain. But what have you got to offer my niece? Oh, not a thing, Unc, but I'll work hard. In a year, we'll have our own car, and in two years, we may get the tires. <laughs> Then, then in a few more years, just a few years. What, Steve? Hi, old timer. Hi, you sweetheart. <laughs> in just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring our stars back to the microphone for their curtain calls. Now, here's an astonishing fact that I've learned about those nylon stockings you probably got for Christmas. The yarn used in making sheer 30 denier nylon stockings. Yarn so fine that it makes a hair look heavy and coarse. It's actually made up of 10 tiny filaments twisted together. And listen to this. A pound of it, if unwound, would measure about 86 miles long. Think of it. Yarn so delicate that 86 miles of it weighs only a pound. Well, you can see how every inch must be perfect and strong, free from weak places, if stockings are to wear. And you can see how important it is to treat those precious nylons gently. Wash them in mild suds. Never rub them with cake soap. Never use soaps with harmful alkali. Here's what a recent issue of a bulletin called Defense, published by the government, reported. We quote, Soap with free alkali rots fibers, fades colors. End of quotation. New Quick Lux Flakes have no harmful alkali, and they float away perspiration and soil without the dangerous rubbing that's apt to weaken the threads. So, when you hear the Lux Radio Theater say, Lux stockings every night, you know it's expert advice. And it's thrifty advice, too, for it keeps your precious stockings new-looking longer. Now more than ever, don't trust to luck. Trust to Lux. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. A producer's heaven must be filled with players like Hedy Lamar and Bob Hope. Step up to the footlights, please. Oh, thank you, C.B., and if we ever get to heaven, we'll make sure and always wash our wings in Lux. <laughs> Hedy, would 
Would you like to go out with me New Year's Eve? No, I'd love to, Bob. What have your passes for? <laughs> Are you insinuating I'm not generous with my money? Well, you didn't tip that usher when he went out to get ice cream. Well, I was a little short, and I didn't want to break a defense bond. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so see your banker or post office for defense bonds tomorrow. Thank you, Bob, for that opportunity. Oh, pleasure, C.B. Gee, just think, now I can go back to my program and tell him I made love to Hedy Lamar. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be down at Metro Goldwyn Mayor and hear Hedy tell about it. Did you really enjoy making love to me, Bob? Yeah, now take me off the chain, C.B. It's <laughs> the first time I ever hugged a girl and had my suit steamed and pressed at the same time. Well, I'll let you in on a secret, Bob. <laughs> you know, Hedy could have had Clark Gable as our leading man here tonight. But she insisted on you. Why, Hetty, you could have had Clark Gable and you insisted on me. Why? Well, these days everybody's making sacrifices, so I wanted to... <laughs> well, look, no. I don't like to draw comparisons, Hetty, but you played opposite Robert Taylor. How do I compare with him as a romantic star? <laughs> well, how do I compare with Clark Gable? How about Charles Boyer? Why don't you answer? I must be a better lover than some actor. I know, Bob, but I can't make up my mind whether it's Abbott or Costello. <laughs> what are you going to have next week, Mr. DeMille? Uh, one of the finest love stories the theater has ever given us, Eddie. It's Smiling Through. And our stars will be Jeanette McDonald, Brian Ahern, and Jean Raymond. <laughs> Smiling Through was a great hit on Broadway, and on three different occasions, it's been a hit motion picture. Our production next Monday night is adapted from the new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor picture. And we'll have the same stars that you saw on the screen in this vital emotional drama. Oh, that sounds really swell, C.B. I'm going to listen to it myself if I'm not too busy working. You know, I have to make a living. But, uh... Bob, I, I thought you only worked in the daytime on Louisiana Purchase. That's right, but I'm also on the night shift at Lockheed. Good night. <laughs> Good night. You two make an ideal couple. Good night, Eddie. This week provides the exit cue for 1941. It's been a year of uncertainty and doubt. Now all that is swept aside. We face the new year, resolved upon a brave new world to come. A world where freedom and justice will never again be threatened by tyranny. But we know that it will not come by wishing. We've got to fight for it. So on behalf of our sponsors and our staff, I wish for every one of you the opportunity to work and to fight to make this the happiest new year since the birth of this nation. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Jeanette McDonald, Brian Ahern, and Jean Raymond in Smiling Through. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood and wishing you a happy and triumphant New Year. Ladies and gentlemen, the editors of Motion Picture Daily have informed us that the Lux Radio Theater has been selected again this year as the leading dramatic program on the air in the annual poll conducted by Motion Picture Daily. All the radio editors throughout the country participated in this poll, and to all of them we say thank you. Bob Hope appeared tonight through the courtesy of the Pepsodent Company and is now seen on the screen in the Paramount Technicolor picture, Louisiana Purchase. Eddie Lamar appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Tune in next Monday night to hear Jeanette McDonald, Brian Ahern, and Jean Raymond in Smiling Through. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.